for a multi-stage lottery. The following probability distribution represents the gas prices of the lottery with their corresponding probabilities. Complete parts A through D below. So we are given the X and P of X table. X is the cash price uh, and P of X is the probability of getting that um, X price. Part A. If the rent price is $18 million, find and interpret the expected gas price. And if a ticket costs $1, what is your expected profit from one ticket? Well, this this problem is e is easier to uh, uh, solve when we use uh, Excel or Start Grunt, but let's use Excel in in this uh, example. Okay, so now I have the Excel table. Uh, I have the X column and P of X column. To find the expected value, the expected gas price, we use the formula. The mean or the expected value is equal to the sum of the product of x and p of x. So first thing is I need to find um, the product of x and p of x. So basically you, you are multiplying the x and p of x together for every row. So I use a formula, I press equal, I press x, multiply p of x, that is my first row. So I Drag down this box, this formula for the rest of the rows, and I get the the order value. Now I need to sum them together, right? The summation notation. So I need to sum them, and um, that is going to be using the sum. And I just drag everything, highlight everything, and it will give me zero point three one eight eight seven. Uh, one and I want you to route to the nearest sense as needed so this is 0 0.32 because the value after that is 8 more than 5 so 0 0.32 or 32 cents is your expected gas price and then what is the interpretation of the expected gas price um, this should be this option if you play the lottery many, many times, on average, you will win the expected gas price per the lottery ticket. Okay? If you play many, many times, on average, then you are going to win the expected gas price per the lottery, the lottery ticket. And the expected profit from $1 ticket is, well, to find the profits, you have to um, subtract, right? Subtract the amount of money that you spend out to buy the ticket. So you buy the ticket for one dollar, and you are expected to win only zero point thirty two. So uh, we just simply take the expected uh, gas price zero point thirty two cents or thirty two cents. Subtract the amount that you spend. You spend one dollar for for one ticket, so you are actually uh, getting a negative value. So you are losing sixty eight cent or negative zero point sixty eight. That is your expected profits from one dollar ticket. Now they ask you if the rent price is eighteen million, what is the standard deviation of the gas price? Well, uh, we do have the, the formula to find the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance. And the variance is found by um, this formula. So this formula is, is saying that we first thing is we find a sum. We find a sum. And then we just subtract that to the square of the mean right here. Okay. So first, I have to find a sum first. So I'm going to use the, my Excel, the same thing, the same table. Now, I need to find x squared. So my next column is my x squared column. So basically, I click on my x value and multiply by itself to get the x squared. And I do the same thing for uh, the rest of the other rows, right, until row number 9. 
So this column is my x square. Okay. Now I need to multiply to p of x. So I need x square, and I need to multiply by uh, to the column p of x. So I click on the x square. I multiply by p of x, which is this column. So I click on the same row and multiply that. And I do the same thing for the other rows. And I have this column, right? And again, we need to find the sum. The sum. Uh, this last row is the sum. So we need to find the sum of x squared multiply p of x, which is this entire sum of everything here. So I press echo sum and I highlight everything. I get this value. And then I need to subtract to the mean square. The mean square. The mean is this value. Right, the mean is x, the sum of x and p of x. So let's do it. Um, let's let's call variant down here. It's gonna be equal to the sum. We just got it here, minus minus the square of the mean, which is the mean is this value. So the square mean multiplied by itself two times, right? So do the subtraction. Then I get the variance to find the standard deviation. I will take the square root of that, SQRT, the function for the square root, square root of the variance, and then close everything, and that will give me 1467. And they want you to route to the nearest dollar as needed. So we want to route it to the nearest dollar, so 1468, because the value after 7 is 8, more than 5, so I add one more, so 1468. Okay, and uh, we have a really big uh, a loss value for the standard deviation. So this suggests uh, that there is a wide range of payouts, right? A wide range because the standard deviation is very big. So check the answer. Okay, you only buy one dollar ticket, and the standard deviation. The expected uh, value is only 32 cents, but the standard deviation is a thousand something, right? It's huge difference. So you expect to get a wide range for uh, the payouts. Now to the nearest millions, how much should the rent price be so that you can expect a profit? Okay, so for this problem, we have to do some uh, algebra here. Um, let's try these questions using uh, paper. All right. So what is the profit again? We are expecting to get a profit. So first thing, you have to uh, understand that to find a profit, we get the expected value. Right, this is your expected value. Uh, what about the price that you can get? But then don't forget that you buy the ticket for one dollar, so you subtract one dollar. Okay, so whatever you get for the expected uh, gas price, you must subtract one dollar because one dollar is the amount you spend to buy the ticket, and that's why in the begin in the beginning we got thirty two cents. It is less than one dollar. That's why you get a negative uh, ex uh, expected profit. And now um, they ask you how much should the rent price be so that you can get the expect uh, expected profit. So basically, uh, you don't want this profit to be negative just like before. So at least you have to find the location where it is equal to zero, the break and even point, okay? So as long as you can find where it is equal to uh, to zero, then, um, then yes, you should be able to, to uh, solve for the range price. So basically, to make it equal to zero, we want this one to be one, okay? We want this one to be one. That is your expected uh, value expected value. So I will call the range price 
to be the rent price to be the letter G. Okay. So to find the expected expected value of this table, I simply multiply uh, the x by p of x and then adding them together. So I have g. We don't know the value because I'm solving solving for that. So g multiplied to this uh, number 0 0.0000000000 and then six six one. That is the, the the product of the first row. And then you also do the same thing for the second one. We have 200,000 and we multiply 0 0.0000032. And we also multiply the next one, the next row. These are just the, the sum of the product to get the expected value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 5, 6, 9. And then we add to a hundred zero point zero 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 one four seven one seven two plus two seven zero point zero zero three four six nine zero four two. Okay. And um and four times whatever right here. Four times 0.0084255518 and then we still have the last two rows and then 0 multiplied to 0 0.972 whatever right the last one and I mean that this one is 0 because 0 times whatever is 0 so you want to solve the equation for 1 because I want to solve the expected value right to be one because as long as you get at least one then you subtract the one dollar uh, that you bought the ticket then your profit is zero so starting from that point you will now begin to get the profit okay so we have to be able to find all the sum of these value right um, actually I can use Excel um, I can use Excel because I know that I'm I'm looking for this value right here. We don't know the value, but we, we still have the same thing down here. Okay, so I'm gonna copy, actually I'm gonna copy this table. And then go over here, right? Now, we don't know this value. So I'll call the question mark because I'm looking for this value. So basically we still add, uh, we still um, multiply X and P of X. It, it is a long uh, expression. So this one multiply this number and then I do the same thing for the rest of the value, right? Which is this entire long expression right here. And then I want to find a sum. So it, it helped me to get uh, all of those calculations quickly. So that is your point. Um, okay, so that's the sum, right? So we have uh, G multiply 0 0.0000000661 and then everything here we just we just uh, sum them right we just sum them to get to this number right except the first row so 0 point that is 0 point one one nine right one nine nine eight and then nine one and it is equal to one to the right hand side and now we are ready to solve for g so i'm i'm going to take one okay let's use the calculator take one subtract this value 0 0.199891 so i get this value on the right hand side okay and then to solve for g, we have to divide by this expression right here. So divide by 0 0.0000000661 because this is the multiplication with g, so we divide by that to get to g. And that will be this value right here. So it looks like this is 121 million, 121 million around that. 
So 121 million. Um, am I missing something? Double check that one last time. Oh, I think we have to route it. Okay. Because of the 49. All right, let's let's row it to 122. They want you to row it. Yeah, they want you to row it. I forgot about that. They want you to row it because uh, 121 is still um, under the value because we have uh, some extra amount of money here. So you have to row it to 122 million. Okay. And does the size of the rent price affect your chance of winning and explain? And of course, no. Your chance of winning is determined by the properties of the lottery, not the payouts. Okay? So it doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter. The size is bigger and bigger. Uh, no. It will not affect your chance of winning because the cha your chance of winning is determined by the properties of the lottery, not the payouts of the range uh, price. And that is the end of this question.